بسم الله بسم الله رب العالمين اللهم صل على محمد سيد المرسلين وخاتم النبيين وحجة رب العالمين المنتجب في الميثاق المصطفى في الظلال المطهر من كل آفة البريء من كل عيب المؤمل للنجاة المرتجى للشفاعة المفوض إليه دين الله ثم أفضل الصلاة والسلام على حبيبه وابن عمه أمير المؤمنين وقائد الغر المحجنين أسد الله الغالب علي بن أبي طالب ثم أفضل الصلاة والسلام على حبيبته وابنته فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين وعلى والديه الإمامين الشهيدين سيد شباب أهل الجنة الإمام الحسن المسموم وإمام الشهيد المظلوم الحسين قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم إن الله تعالى يباهي بالشاب العابد الملائكة ويقول انظروا إلى عبدي ترك شهوته من أجلي يوسف بيت رسالة الصلوات والظلاة الظلم البنين أنا بالصلوات والظلاة الظلم الإمام الحسن إمام الحسين Youth in the community and youth in Islam play a big role and tonight inshallah we will discuss the roles that this youth can play both male and female because when it comes to Islam if you find Islam embraces this youth and welcomes them and gives them a whole step by step from A to Z for what to do. Islam is not a religion that tells you from this certain age you can do such and such. It gives you the free will from your young age, from a youngster at about five or six or even younger than that, to start to seek the knowledge of Ahlul Bayt or to have a big role, a responsibility in the community for Islam. And this is an important topic when it comes to people who live in a Western society, for example in Australia, in London or in America, you find that the youth, many of them they find that it's difficult to do such roles or response, to take some responsibilities when it comes to Islam, to the Husseiniya, to the mosques, to the centers. But it's not a difficult issue, it's not a difficult thing, a person that thinks it's a difficult, it's not. Many mosques, can, the youth are working in this mosque, bringing out the community. For example, this mosque, many of us, many of you, mashallah, are youth. And if it wasn't for you, it might be this mosque eating dust a couple of days a week. But you bring out the community, bringing out all the people that are from around Sydney to come to this mosque and speak about the issues that the youth find very hard to solve. But it's not hard. Because we come to Muhammad Sadiqa, many of his students were youth, Husham. Husham was one of Imam's best students and Husham was the youngest of them all. That Husham used to sit down and debate big scholars and he used to beat them without hesitation. This young man, Ahlul Bayt Ayyam welcomed them to the community, welcomed them to Islam and they give them responsibilities. If you look what happened in the world in the past years, for example in Egypt, the youth in Egypt, the University of Cairo, they were the first people who started the revolution. 
the people in Libya, the youth who started the revolution. In 1979, the revolution of Iran, the Islamic revolution, it was started by the youth. The youth started the revolution, and the youth now in Iran are building the community, building the country. In the same way, a, pe a, pe a place can be built by the youth, a place can be destroyed by the youth. The faith can be destroyed by the youth. How? Hollywood. Hollywood spends billions of dollars bringing youth to its doors, to its gates, trains them, pays them, and then sells the product of the youth to the youth. Who's the target audience? A person was asked from DreamWorks at the DreamWorks Studios. They asked him, who is your target audience? He said youth, 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 and then he said the seniors. So we, we want the youth to come and watch our movies. We want the youth to come and listen to the concerts that we put up during the weekends. We want the youth to come there, listen and participate and learn from the pop stars and follow the pop stars. But does Islam stay silent? Is Islam a religion that closes the gates when it comes to the youth? No. There you find many examples from the beginning of Islam. You find many examples in the Holy Quran from prophets. For example, John the Baptist, Prophet Yahya, was given the message. Sabiya, he was given the hikmah, the mulk, he was given the knowledge as he was a young lad. You are you come to the companions of Rasulullah the first that comes to the mind, the first companion of Rasulullah is Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib Ali ibn Salati was salam. At the age of 10, he submitted to Islam. At the age of 33 in Khadir Khum, Rasulullah sallallahu said, Man kuntu mawla fahada aliyun mawla. 33, in a time that the other, other companions of Rasulullah, for example, Abu Bakr, was in his 60s. The second Khalifa was in his 50s. Ammar Yasser was in his 60s. Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib was chosen to be the successor of Rasulullah at the age of 33 and 5 months, to be precise. 33 and 5 months. And Imam Ali was asked, when was the first time you started to fight for Islam? He said, when I was 18 years of age. At the age of 10, he submitted to Islam. 18 years of age, he started fighting for Rasulullah in Uhud. He was 21. They said when Imam Ali ibn Talib in Uhud fought and fought and fought, his sword broke. He came to Rasulullah and said, Ya Rasulullah, my sword broke. He said, this is your sword, Dhul Fiqar. La Fata illa Ali, la Saif illa Dhul Fiqar. There is no youth like Ali. And there is no sword like Dhul Fiqar. This was announced between the heavens and earth. لا فتاة إلا علي لا سيف إلا ذو الفطار. So Islam opens its gates. Islam embraces those who want to come to Islam from young age to have responsibilities, to have roles. Every and each one of you can do the best in the community. Not one Hussein, not one mosque, not one center. Uh, tomorrow we can have thousands of centers, and inshallah all of them can be packed. Like the brother said, many of them are not, they're empty. We make this beautiful mosque, but it's empty. What's the good of that mosque? We make these beautiful centers, but it's empty. What's the good of that center when well, it's empty? We want people to come. We want the youth to come with the problems and ask, how can we solve these problems? It's either us or it's either them. Our neighbors, when you hear their music. These neighbors, they're always thinking of opening youth centers, bringing out the community, speaking with them, talking about different figures, Lady Gaga, Justin Bieber, and now you think, oh, how does he, does he know? Well, because you see it everywhere. It's because it's so spread out that even me, even you, you don't want to know about this. But when you're driving, you see, someone is coming, who's that name of? Oh, Lady Gaga, who's that person? Some wacko from United States. But the youth, 
found that woman or lady. I don't know, there's been some people debating, is it male or female? They don't know. Now we have that problem. We have the youth from our communities. Hassan, Hussein, Zahra, Zainab, Fatima, following this kind of figures. What do we have Qasim ibn Hassan? A 13-year-old teen, when he was in Karbala, on the, before the night of Ashura, he was asked by Imam al Hussein, after Imam Hussein delivered this message, they delivered this sermon to the companions, that tomorrow, the, night, the day of Ashura, there is no one going to survive. Everyone will be killed. You, 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 everyone. If you want to leave, you can leave. Qasim al Hassan was sitting in the corner of the tent, the Ruai says, and he raised his hand. A 13 year old, a teen. Imam al Hussein looked at this teen. And the Ruai said, he started to cry. He said, What do you want? He said, Ya Allah, am I going to be killed? Imam al Hussein asks him a question. He doesn't answer him, but he asks a question with a question. He says to him, كيف الموت عندك؟ How do you find death? And Qasim al-Hassan, سلام الله عليه, received a beautiful answer. He said, في نصرتك أحلى من العسل. في نصرتك أحلى من العسل. Helping you, it's sweeter than honey. Qasim al-Hassan, that person, that figure, is our own mother to follow. A 13-year-old. I said in the day of Ashura, he was he was not carrying the sword, but he was dragging the sword because he couldn't carry it. Ali Akbar, 27 years of age, helping his father, and his father asked him before entering Karbala. He saw his father, Imam Hussein, worried. He asked him, "Dad, why are you worried?" He said, "Because we're going to death." He asked him, "Are we right? Are we on the right path?" He said, "Yes." He said, then it doesn't matter if death comes to us or we go to death. It's not going to be any problem for us. This is a figure that we want to follow. A figure that we want to follow is like Mus'ab ibn Umayr. Mus'ab ibn Umayr or Mus'ab al Khayr, also known as Mus'ab al Khayr. This figure is a companion of Rasulullah. This character, what he did was, he's a person of Ashab al Kahf. The seven sleepers, also called the seven sleepers. He's like a Sahab al Kahf. Mus'ab al Khayr, or Mus'ab al Umayr. Mus'ab al Khayr was the wealthiest and the most handsome and the most powerful youth in Mecca. Now the Rawaiya says the ladies they wish that Mus'ab wants to marry. The female they always wanted that Mus'ab wanted to come and knock on the doors. He used to uh, send groups of people to Syria to buy, you know, this kind of beautiful perfume, CK or whatever now these days are. Go buy it from Syria and bring it back to me. That's how I wish this person was. This person, when he heard the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, said, "Amen. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah." His mother took him to the house, to the dungeon. She locked him up, started torturing him. Leave Muhammad. Leave the religion of Muhammad. Come back to the religion of your forefathers. You don't believe in the idols, in the statues. Because they used to make statues out of everything. Even from date and flower. The second Khalifa was telling the story to his, you know, his companions and he was smiling. He said, one day we used to, we, we sat down and we made this date like uh, idol from date, flour, and olive oil. And a drama came to Mecca, and it was too hot, and there was no food. And we were praying to this God that we start smelling this beautiful aroma coming to us from the God, you know, because it's made of date. So we thought, oh, we're hungry, what can we do? What can we do? Start eating from the date, from the God. I'm eating the hand of the God, the other one is eating the head of the God, and we finished the whole God. Oh my God, we ate our own God. What can we do? Well, next day if we get more money, we start to rain, we make another God, made of another kind of fruit or whatever. 
So come back to your forefathers. Believe in your forefathers, you know, religion. Leave Muhammad. No. I will not leave Muhammad. I'm saying this person had everything. He had everything. And the brother was talking about Hawza. When we were in Hawza, they used to give us a Shahriya. And the Shahriya in that time, about 10 years ago, maybe 10 years ago, it was to be 5,000 to man in Iran. 5,000 to man is about $2.50 a month. Alhamdulillah, we used to live with our family. My mom cooks, my father brings the food, and everything was good. The 5,000 to man was for chewing gum or something. Or, you know, chips. You know, we are young people in Hamza. But the other people that used to come from Afghanistan, Kabul, or the people from Pakistan, 5,000 to man was 5,000 to man for them. That's it. That 5,000 to man is going to be in the world for one month. So they used to count every, you know, real to give to the, not butcher, they never went to the butcher. They always went to, you know, buy some little bit cheese or little bit bread. I remember one of my friends, he went to buy some bread and the baker, he said to him, uh, five, 500 to one. And he said, I want half of them. He said, I would not sell half of it. He said, I don't have 500 to one. 250, please, half of it. And he said, please. And the man said, okay, don't worry. So that's how hard it was. And now we're talking about a figure like Mus'ab al Umay, Mus'ab al Khair, that had everything. Everything. And this is everything in that time. If you come to this time, just imagine a person has the best cars, you know, the new Lamborghini, and he has the best penthouse in the city. And then one day a person comes and tells him, there is a God, there is a religion, but if you believe in that God, you have to give that all away. Would you really do that? Maybe not. But Muslim Ahmed said, no. And she tortured him. His father said, not even one cent will come to your pocket anymore. That's it. Said, no worries. When he went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rasulullah sent him and he was the first ambassador of Islam. Awal Safir Islam. The first ambassador of Islam sent to Medina. The Rawaiya said, he went to Medina. There was no Muslims in Medina. By the time the Prophet came to Medina, there were 10,000 Muslims because of Mus'ab al Khayr. Sallallahu alayhi wa This person was killed in Uhud after Rasulullah saw his body, you know, Muna'am, you know, this wealthy young lad, now he has nothing. The Prophet started crying. Imam Ali Mubarak was next to the Prophet, asked, why are you crying? He said, I can't even cover Mus'a. There's nothing that I can cover him with. Just a, this is a person that you want to follow. Leave everything behind and follow Islam. You don't have to do that. It's not what we're saying. We're saying, have Islam, have the best things. Be your, the boss of your job and have Islam. Pray Salah to learn and go to work. And this is the reward from Rasulullah that says, In Allah Ta'ala, Allah Azza wa Jal, you buy him. He tells his malaika, look, look at this young man. He lived all the pleasures of the earth. Everything that was nice to do. Everything. He left it behind and he's there to pray for me. Salah to learn. He's there to pray his salah. And many young people, they want to follow Ahlul Bayt. They love to follow Ahlul Bayt. But sometimes you see families, they don't want them. What can they do? There are centers, there are mosques, there are seniors. Especially during Muharram. And this is the problem we have. It's not only Muharram, it's not only Shahar Ramadan. It's all days of the year. So some people follow the day of Ashura, they let Yom al the day that we all go home and see this, everything is done. No, everything just started. You learn from figures like Harun Nazir al Riyahi. He saw two roads and he chose the good one. And Hur, he had one choice and he chose the good one. But we do that choosing every single day. Driving by, I'm hungry. There is Mackey's. Do I go and eat from Mackey's or do I go home and eat at home and pray my salah? 
Do I leave salah because I have work? Or do I pray on time? And believe me, many times the people they think that I don't have time to pray. When you pray, Allah blesses that day for you. Allah makes everything easy for you. And that many, many times happens. I have a problem at 1.30, I have to go. Wait, I have to go at 1.30. And he doesn't give out his salah. You see him running to his appointment, but when he has salah, ah, you know what? We have time, five hours left. Before the sun is setting, what does he say? He says, oh, wait, wait. Stay like you stayed for Ali. Or come back like you came back for Ali. I'm one of the followers of Ali. It's not going to come back. You have that minute. You have that minute to pray. And the, the time that you pray, the beginning of the time, is much better than praying in the end of the time. And the thawab, the reward is much more. Salla ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. You come to other people, for example, to the seven sleepers, they call them in Christianity, Ashab al Kahf. And the Quran Kareem, what does it say? It says, Fitya. Young lad, Fitya. The Imam Sadat was asked, he said the word today, Fitya. The companions of Imam Sadat asked Imam Sadat, were the Ashab al Kahf Fitya? He said, Fitya in that time was a person who was in his 300s. And Tilmikha or Maximunia were in their Fitya, were in their young age. They had everything. Everything was prepared for them. But they chose the way of Allah Azza wa They left everything behind for Allah Azza wa And you will learn from this video. Because we, we sometimes we think these people, they had nothing. And we are in different worlds and we have different tests. But they have more than us. They had much more than us. Talmikha was a commander, he was a general. And Tanika used to be, used to, uh, they used to pay him that they are almost 40,000 dinar a month. 40,000 in that time, in the Yanus time. But he chose the way of Allah Azza wa Jal. He said, I will follow Allah Azza wa Jal. And then why is it the seven or the eight of them? Because in Quran it says it was seven or eight, but Allah knows the numbers of them. We don't care about the number, but the things these people did, the deeds these people did. They went and walked in the desert. Where are, we, are you walking? They said, we are walking, looking for Allah, for God. Imam al-Baqar said that their feet started to bleed. They came down from the horses. They said, because we have to be humble. We have to look that Allah doesn't want someone to be in his pride. And I'm looking for you. Find me. No. With tawadha, with humbleness. I'm looking for Allah Azza wa Jal. So he has to see me in this weather, in this desert, I'm working on my feet, looking for Allah Azza wa Jal. And then Allah Azza wa Jal gave, him the, gave them this reward. Gave them this thawab. That when you come to Quran al-Kareem, there's a surah named after them. Surah al-Kahf. The people of the cave. Salla ala Muhammad wa There are many examples in Quran of the young. And you won't find old people. Not that much. The prophets, most of them are young. For example, Prophet Yusuf, Joseph. When the brothers heard this revelation from their brother Joseph, Yusuf, how could he be the next prophet? And he, he is in his nine, he was nine years of age at that time. He's a little child. And look at us. Yehuda, Lawi, who in the twenties. How could he be the next prophet? And Prophet Yusuf was tested every step of the way. He wasn't given the prophet who just like that. Allah just gave it to him because you are a son of Jacob, Yaqub, and the grandson of Ismail, and the great grandson of Ibrahim. Here you go, you know, just enjoy it. No? Steps of the way he was tested. They started beating him up, their own brother. And then he looked up with that. He was crying and he was bleeding. He looked up to his brothers and he smiled. 
They said, why are you smiling? We are beating you. He said, I'm smiling because one of the neighbor's kids asked me, tomorrow we want to fight with you. Who would you bring to the Ma'arakah, to the battlefield to fight on your behalf? I said to him, my brothers. And now I see my own brothers beating me. My own brothers beating me. He was thrown into the world. And here Allah Azza wa is testing you. Do you have faith in Allah? Or do you have faith in someone else to help you? And here he has faith in Allah. He said, Ya Allah, I ask you to help me. And we always have to ask Allah to help us. I have a point with this person, everything is going to be 100% right. How do you know? How do you know that person can do anything for you? Look what Allah can do for you. Allah Azza wa what can you do for me? The Sayyara came, the caravan, picked him up, took him to Egypt. He was a slave. And see, a prophet like Yusuf was sold for Darahim al-Ma'dud, for a couple of dirhams. To be precise, 21 dirham. And then here, this person, Yusuf, he looks up and he says, why was I sold for 21 dirham only? Jibra'il came down and said to him, Yusuf, you remember one day you were looking in the mirror and he said, MashaAllah, look at the handsome face, look how pretty I am. It was Yusuf, Allah made him the most, and he's the most prettiest or the most handsome male that Allah created. The most handsome. He was looking in the mirror and he was saying, MashaAllah, look at the pretty face. MashaAllah, I don't need any cream or anything that makes me nice. I'm already beautiful. If I were a slave, how much would I be sold? And I'll show you. 21 dirham. Darahim al ma'dud. Ubi thamanin bachs. Thamanin bachs. Darahim al ma'dud. And then he says, Ya Allah, whatever I have, I have from you. And here, Allah. You see, one part Allah not punishes, but Allah shows him the other way, and the other part Allah is rewarding him. Straight away Allah rewards him. How? Aziz al Masih comes and says, I want to buy him. How much? 50,000 dirham. And another person says, 100. 150. They start to auction him. Aziz al saw that this is not nice. He's Aziz al Masih, and he has all the money in Masih. All the safes in his are in his disposal. What does he do? He says, his weight, gold. And they sold Yusuf by his weight in gold. Allah wants to show him. There is this way and there is this way. When you come to Ayat al Kursi, Salah Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. When you come to Ayat al Kursi, Allah Azza wa what does he say? He says there are two types of people. There's one type that moves from darkness into light, and the other type of they move from light into darkness. And they, one, wants Urwat al to be his role models and his leaders. And Imam Sadr was asked, Who are the Urwat al Wufqa? He said, Ahl Bayt. The progeny of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the other part, they accept the Ta'ud to be their leader. And who is the Ta'ud? Shaytan. So we have two types of people. One that moves from darkness into light. He's in the cave and he sees that, you know, the entrance or the exit of the gate. And always if you're in the darkness, in the gate, cave, you see the exit to be light, and you come out, and you see come out, and you hear Allah wali yu ladina. Allah is the wali, and Arwat al Wuthqa, the other leaders, they help them out. And the other time, they in lightness, everything is perfect, you know, everything is good, but Allah tests them a little bit. If you remember last week, we talked about those people, Allah tests some Shia a little bit. And as soon as they see some hardness, they say, no way, thank you very much. Ali is for someone else. Well, Ali, well, he said himself, he said, if you are my Shia, be prepared for the misfortunes and the calamities that come upon you. Prepare? They asked them two weeks ago, what's your name? Ali. 
Hassan and a couple of others. Do you believe in Ali's change in Syria? Change. Curse Ali. And what Ali said to himself, don't curse me. When it comes to that time, don't curse me. They said, we'll not curse Ali. And I will be headed in Syria. And there are other people in here in Australia. If you ask a couple of questions, oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not Shia, I don't, just, don't say anything to anyone. See, you have people like that, that in a society that doesn't accept them to be a Shia, and they are prepared to say, we are Shia, we follow Ali, no matter what. And you come to this society because he wants to get more paid for work, he's prepared to change his name, he's prepared to change his identity. And even he's prepared, Mr. Jirab Allah, so this person, even in his office, he had a bottle of wine, and I said to him, aren't you Shia? I said, yes, say it. But when I have customers coming in, if they see the bottle of wine, they say, MashaAllah, he's one of us. We can help him out, we give him more money. Bottle of wine in his office, and I said to him, you know, this is haram. And I said, explain, no, say it, this brings me a lot of money. And what does this money do in his life? Does it help his life or is going to ruin his life? So, you see, use of one part, Allah shows him the misfortunes that he didn't ask my help. You he ask someone else's help. You ask someone else to help you. You ask someone else to assist you. And this is what happens. Even in the jail, after he refused Zulaikha. Zulaikha, when Yusuf refused her, and Surah so Yusuf is a beautiful Surah. That tells you the whole story. Zulaikha, she wasn't happy. She said, oh, this is not good. How could this happen? I'm Zulaikha, I'm not, you know, I'm the queen of the queens and all that. What can I do to punish this person? First, she asked the women of Egypt to come. Because the women of Egypt, they were caused gossiping about Zulaikha. How dare Zulaikha to la'ibu fataha? To la'ibu fataha? Her own slave, she's running after him. And what did she do? How dare she? When the women of Egypt came and they saw this beauty, they start cutting their fingers. And they didn't even feel the cutness. Zulaikha said to him, Now will one, one of me, the Rawai says, there were one of Zulaikha. After that incident, there were many Zulaikhas. One to Yusuf. Yusuf come to us. Yusuf. Yusuf said, No. I'm prepared to go to jail, to prison. It's a slippery slope. But I will not fall down on my face. I'm prepared to go to jail for the sake of Allah. Seven years he spent in jail. Seven years in prison. One person came to him, Yusuf, I saw my dream. Aksiru Khamra. I'm giving out wine. Okay, if you go to your medic, because you'll be free and you will give your medic, your king, wine. And the person who gives wine to the king is the closest person to the king. So if you have a chance, tell him about me. Allah straight away, Ya Yusuf, what happened? How could you do that? You ask another person for help and he forgot me. Yusuf, at the age of 37, the wise is, he saw his father. And I'm telling you just glimpses of that. Why are we talking about Yusuf? Because you see a young man going through what we go through. He, you know, it's a beautiful lady, so what can I do and say yet? There's halal way. Yusuf was in the time of Zulaikha, and Zulaikha, she was the most beautiful woman in Egypt. And Yusuf never looked at her face. Never looked at her. She used to put makeup on, all sorts of makeup. She used to dress beautifully, put the beautiful perfume. And she used to come to Yusuf, speak with him. Yusuf is looking down. Ya yeah, Yusuf, look at me. He doesn't care. And nowadays, if you tell them, brothers, sisters, don't look, especially with the brothers, don't look at what you work, you know, at that, what's going on in front of you. All saying that if we don't look, we're going to hit them. Yeah, we're saying that. Is, there's always haram way, there's haram way. Itta Allah rafa'ak Allah. Itta Allah rafa'ak Allah. Be fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah takes you to places you will not even imagine of it. 
You will not even imagine. Believe me, the only one, the knowledgeable, Allah will give you the best knowledge. And no one else has had. You want wealth? Allah will give you the best wealth. Because you pass the test. As long as you pass the test, Allah will reward you for it. But if you fail the test and you say, Oh, what does God accept my prayers? Because of that. And Nabi Musa, alayhi salatu wasalam, when they saw this, uh, this man, this individual was praying and asking Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, give me this and give me that. Musa just passed and he came back two days later and he saw me that same situation. He's praying, praying, praying. I said, Ya Allah, if I have what this man wants, I would give it to him, I would grant it to him. And Allah looked at him and Allah said to Musa, Ya Musa, you think I'm not merciful? You think I'm stingy? I can give to everyone what I like. I'm Kareem, I'm Kareem Kurama, I'm generous. But he's going to the different path. He's not coming to the path I said to him to come from. When you say your dua, say Allahumma bahak bifatimatawabiha wa ba'aliha wa baniha. In the sake of Ahl al-Bayt, I want this and this. And yeah, prior to spook me. The first thing that Imam Rasulullah, Imam Sadiq alayhi wa sallam said in the name of Al-Qadr as from Allah is the hidayah and the afiyat of the deen. What dunya? That's what we have in Quran al-Kareem. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi l'akhirati hasana wa qina adab al-naq. We ask in this dunya and we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to help us with this dunya and the next. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad اللهم كل وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم بحق فاطمة وأبيها وبعلها وبنيها فسر المستودع فيها ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقناع عذاب النار بحق محمد وآله الأطهار اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم بحق فاطمة وأبيها وبعلها وبنيها والسر المستودع فيها يا مفيد يا غفور يا ودود أذرنا بحلالك عن حرامك وبطاعتك عن معصيتك وبفضلك عن من سواك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين الفاتحة مع السلوات الله